Hello and thank you for watching. Uh, my name is John and you're uh, watching the second video of Crash Course in Maya Hair, Introduction to Maya. In this video we're going to uh, have a brief introduction of Maya, like what is Maya Hair, uh, pain effects, and what that means to us. Well first off, what is Maya Hair? Maya Hair is a pain effect. And what is a pain effect? Well a pain effect is a tool that allows you to use a tool like the Artisan Paint Tool paint strokes on 2D canvas to create like textures and images and such. With that being said, because it is a paint effect, there's a couple of things we need to note. If you're rendering in Maya software, um, Maya software renders paint effects on a separate rendering pass. What that means for us is uh, lights will affect it differently, some effects will not transfer over, and uh, so on and so forth, such as um, ray tracing. So it is not really uncommon for productions to uh, create separate scene files and lights for the hair itself instead of uh, the rest of the scene. Another option is mental ray. If you uh, start rendering verse, uh, with mental ray, mental ray automatically converts my hair into something called a hair primitive. It does automatically absolutely nothing going on, so there's nothing to worry about. Now, because it's a pain effect, uh, is very UV dependent, like I'll show you here shortly. Like in this scene, you can see I have a plane with uh, two subdivisions on uh, on each side, and I have the UV texture open. As you can see, it is well drawn in the zero to one space because it's a plane rather easily. And when I apply some hair to it, it'll take a second because of uh, the situation, but you'll see that the plane is here and the hair is rendered out in the zero one space. Now, I'd like to explain that it is in the zero one space that the hair is drawn, not necessarily on the 3D field. So if I just select the UV and move it, you'll notice that on the top right corner, the hair is disappearing. That's because, like I said, it is drawn in the texture and if I move it out of the zero one space it completely vanishes minus that small artifact right there. Now I'm going to open a scene file that is going to further demonstrate the importance of uh, UV wrapping and some limitations uh, that people may use. Now as you can see here I have a cube nothing fancy I just have a UV uh, tester on it as you can see uh, it is the same all the way around that is because the UVs are piled on top of each other now if I apply the hair, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to cover everything? Is it not going to do anything at all? Well, let's find out. After a couple of seconds, you can see that it's only on one side. I'll even turn off the uh, texture so you can see faster and easier. It is only on one side. Now why is that? Well, because it's drawn in the zero one space only. With that being said, if I select the face and then go to the UV and start moving the UVs around, like uh, like previously, it's going to start uh, taking away some of the UVs on this side or uh, the hair on this side, and place it, you know, not there. However, it's going to go to the another UV or another face that shares the same space. Now, if I move this back, it is not going to replace it because it's already drawn on this set on this face. So if I go and completely move. You can see that everything, like the plane, is disappearing, and if I move it back, it is not replacing, but like before, it won't replace because of there. Like I stated previously, 0-1 space, not 3-D space. So that is a basic introduction to my hair, uh, the paint effects and UV dependencies. Uh, next video I'm going to talk about the, uh, the menu and how to actually create it. Thank you very much for tuning in, and have fun.